Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. Now I'm going to take you through here some of the A2 redox and cell stuff. So I'm going to try uh, this explain everything app, which I recommend actually that you try perhaps for your revision if you're looking for a way to uh, organize your notes and things like that. Um, it does cost a bit, but the classic edition which I'm using for this isn't actually too bad. So looking at this then, what have we got? Well, here I've got an electrochemical cell for you set up and you may recognize this because it's a very similar image to one that we use in lesson. Now I'm going to focus on each side of the electrochemical cell to begin with and I'm going to start over here with the zinc. Now with the zinc on this side specifically what I've got over here is a half equation which is going to be proceeding in the oxidation direction. Now the reason I know that this is going to be going in the oxidation direction <laughs> isn't just because here I can see that the electrons are going from uh, the zinc side but it's also because if I was to look at the standard electro potential for the zinc it would come out as 0.76 and if I was to look at the one for the copper it would be plus 0.34. Now normally um, any half equation that represents a half cell is written in the reduction direction but with the example here of the zinc being more negative then I'm aware that the zinc one is actually going to be the half equation that proceeds in the oxidation direction. So for this side just here I can write an oxidation equation which is going to show the loss of electrons which is going to be zinc uh, equilibrium with zinc 2 plus and I'm also going to have my two electrons on this side. Even more evidence that this is an oxidation equation is loss of electrons are going to be given out as a product and specifically these electrons are here. They're on this wire which is connecting the two metal electrodes together and so they're coming in on this side just here for the copper and so therefore the copper half equation in here is going to be the reverse so it's going to be Cu2 plus and I'm going to be adding in those two electrons that I just mentioned so these are the exact same two electrons and I've got equilibrium hours just here and I've got Cu on this side. In terms of state symbols then we would see any of the solid metal with no charge as a solid um, and then anything with a charge that's an atom so an ion in this case for zinc 2 plus and uh, copper 2 plus they would both be aqueous. Okay, so having cleared all of that out of the way, what else do we need to be aware of in here? What else is going to be going on? Well, what we can't actually see in this that we would actually have, I'm just going to move it up here, uh, what we I haven't actually got in this one, but we would see is, in a normal diagram for this, we'd actually see a voltmeter just here, and that would tell us the uh, cell potential. Now, if I want to calculate the cell potential, then, that's going to be E cell, and it's going to equal reduction minus oxidation. There's loads of different ways of actually performing this calculation. I found alternatives online which actually had reduction plus oxidation. But for us, because we don't actually change the sign on the half equation which becomes the oxidation, which I did mention earlier was going to be the zinc in this case, um, we still have to put the minus in here. So my calculation for this one then was going to be 0.34 minus minus 0.76 and so that gives me a uh, standard cell potential. So this is a cell potential, not just the half equation potential. So the electrode potential that was we saw before, which is these two numbers in the calculation. This one is now 1.1 volts. The other thing that's really important to mention is currently missing from my top bit up here is this little symbol. Now, what we're looking at for this, you don't need to be able to name what it is, but what we're looking at here is this represents standard conditions. So the whole cell has to be operating under standard conditions. So we're looking at 101 or just 100 kilopascals. It doesn't really matter for OCR. We're looking at 298 Kelvin for a temperature. You would quote that in Kelvin. I wouldn't really quote that in degrees C. It would try to be more scientific. And we've also got all the solutions must be one mole per decimeter cubed. So it doesn't matter if it's an acid or one of the ion solutions inside here. It's got to be one mole per decimeter cubed. Something else that's really specific, you'll see the bit I've just circled up and I'll circle it up in the red again so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, the copper, yes it is a copper ion solution in here, but can you see the sulfate ion? That's because if in the exam they asked for the reagent to go in this beaker, you've got to make sure you say CuSO4. So you can't just say copper 2 plus ions because a reagent is something that you'd be able to pick up off a shelf. And if you went into our prep room and you were trying to find Cu2 plus ions, you'd be there for a long time because we don't label things up like that. So we label them up as a full formula. And so here it would be CuSO4 and you'd find that pretty quickly. It is actually a blue solution, much like the diagram. 
Okay, and for the last bit of this, what I want to mention is, if we just zoom in a little bit for this one, um, is the bit that we've not really discussed yet, which is connecting the two cells together. And we would actually say, for the benefit of our exam, we would say that this bit in the middle here, our salt bridge, this is completing the circuit. Please don't say it's transferring electrons. It's not. It actually regulates the ions. And so you must make sure you do not say it uh, completes the circuit in terms of transferring electrons. You just need to be able to say it completes the circuit. You could also suggest alternative formulae for this. So alternatives would include KNO3, for instance, or anything really, as long as it doesn't interact with either contents of the two beakers, because you wouldn't want that. So just be a little bit mindful. It's normally an inert salt, something like KNO3, or in this case, it's got Na+, and the uh, SO42-, minus, and that's quite a good choice, really, considering that the two containers down here, the two beakers, actually have the sulfate ions as well, which aren't involved in the half equations, so it'd be a pretty good choice. I hope that's cleared up some of the points about the electrochemical cells for you. I'll leave you to the rest of the channel and playlists. And until then, happy revising.